so first, I just wanted to say thank you to the organizers. Uh, this has been a really great day, and thank you to all of you uh, for being here. So that language is an instrument of human reason and not merely a medium for the expression of thought is a truth generally admitted. We use programming languages to solve problems. Very often, this means telling the computer to do something. But a programming language is more than a set of instructions. The abstractions provided by the language frame our problems and shape our solutions. A programming language offers us a way to think. Recently, I wondered what it means to think in the language of Lisp. Uh, that's one slide too far, I think. Yeah. Lisp is not one language, but a family of languages. In pursuit of this question, I found my way to the root of the Lisp family tree, to a paper by John McCarthy titled Recursive Functions of Symbolic Expressions and Their Computation by Machine, Part 1. That's a long title for a short paper about a small language, Lisp, developed for research at MIT. McCarthy's, McCarthy's paper reminded me of Philip Guston's cartoon paintings. Overlapping the work of McCarthy and Guston reveals a common pattern of thought, a way of thinking I believe to be Lisp. In that way of thinking, there are four ideas. First, write everything the same way. Guston had one way of painting, hands, cars, cigarettes, brick walls, and books. Regardless of the subject, Guston gave every form the same lumpy thickness. And regardless of the subject's natural color, Guston predominantly used a fleshy pink. When Guston painted an object, he did not paint from life. The cigarette in his painting could be any cigarette. It is not identifiable as the cigarette in his ashtray. Gusted painted objects in the way that you and I write the letter A, just about the same way every time. Guston's style, like handwriting, was a personal notation for what he wanted to say. Notation was also one of McCarthy's primary concerns. Programming languages, languages often use different notations for different abstractions. Functions and for loops tend to be written in different ways. But McCarthy gave all abstractions the same notation. McCarthy's notation is called a symbolic expression. An S expression is either an atom or a pair of S expressions. An atom is a sequence of characters, including spaces. A pair is two S expressions, enclosed by parens and separated by a dot. All list programs can be written with this notation, but McCarthy used a third notation for convenience. A list is many S expressions separated by semicolons. List is sugar to nested pairs terminated by the atom nil. Everything in Lisp is written either as an atom or a list. Second, start with just a few things. I must have done hundreds of paintings of shoes, books, hands, buildings, and cars, just everyday objects. Guston continually painted the same subjects, but each painting is a new experience. Some are quiet, some are strained, some overflow with a sense of dread. Guston does not depend on new subjects for expressiveness. With the economy of a child learning to speak, Guston used a few subjects to say everything. McCarthy designed Lisp with the same economy. He had a notation for data, but he wanted a language for computation. Instead of extending his notation, McCarthy gave S expressions a double purpose. An S expression is both a data format, like JSON or XML, and code for the Lisp programming language. A Lisp interpreter inter a Lisp interpreter evaluates atoms in lists as computational expressions. An atom is evaluated as a variable. A list of one atom substitutes that variable with its bound value. A list of many S expressions is evaluated as the application of an operator to its arguments. S expressions are only evaluated as data. Uh, did it skip? That's it. Um, so S expressions are only evaluated as data, as literal atoms in lists, uh, when they're wrapped in a quote expression. McCarthy's Lisp came with only a few operators built in. First, there are operators for transforming S expressions, operators like eek that tests if two atoms are the same atom, or cons, which constructs a pair. With these five operators, Lisp begins to be a programming language. But McCarthy needed a general purpose abstraction, a way to compute anything. For this, McCarthy added anonymous functions. A function is a list containing the atom lambda, a list of function parameters, and any S expression for the function body. A function is applied to arguments just like any operator by placing it first in a list. McCarthy gave Lisp functions two powerful properties. They can be passed as arguments to other functions, 
and they can be defined recursively. The lambda notation is inadequate for naming functions def defined recursively. McCarthy recognized that recursive anonymous functions, while possible to write, are hard to read because the function doesn't return, refer to itself directly. So McCarthy introduced the operator label. Label binds an, X, an S expression to a variable. By binding a function to a variable, the function can be defined directly in terms of itself. Here's a function that will call itself infinitely. Recursive functions had long been known to mathematicians, but mathematicians had no formal notation for describing conditions when recursion terminates. So McCarthy invented the conditional expression. A conditional expression is a list of pairs. Each pair contains a proposition. Proposition is an expression whose value is either true or false, and a value to give if that proposition is true. So for example, if this proposition is true, then this whole expression evaluates to whatever the value of this expression uh, evaluates to. And then if this proposition is false, it would continue down to the next pair in the list and uh, use the same rules of evaluation. So with a way to define functions in less than a dozen operators, McCarthy's list was complete. Third, use those things to make a world. When I leave the studio and get back to the house and think about what I did, then I like to think I've left a world of people in the studio, a world of people. In fact, they are more real than the world I see. Gustin's paintings are filled with the same stuff and painted in the same way because they all refer to the same world. Sometimes this world feels familiar. We might recognize the hand's grip on the cigarette, the bare light bulb, the broken bed, but each of us would paint it differently. This is Gustin's world a distillation of the reality he lived. In what world does a programmer live? We build architectures, we situate our architectures and environments, but where do those architectures and environments exist? They exist within the world of the interpreter. The interpreter wraps around the architecture and the environment, enforcing the laws that govern everything within. The culmination of McCarthy's paper is a list program that evaluates list programs. In less than 30 lines, McCarthy defines two functions, a val and apply. These functions compute the value of any Lisp expression. To show us the Lisp language, McCarthy constructs the world of the Lisp interpreter. Fourth, step into the world. As a young man, Gustin joined his fellow factory workers on strike. When the Ku Klux Klan, uh, this, that's an American uh, white supremacist organization, when the Ku Klux Klan was hired to break the strike, Gustin painted his experience. Those paintings were shown in a local coffee shop until they were found by the Klan and Gustin's words mutilated. During his cartoon period, Gustin returned to that experience, but this time as a participant. There are self-portraits. I perceive myself as being behind the hood. Gustin painted himself as a Klansman, making art, smoking cigarettes, driving around town. He did this in order to understand what it means to be evil. In a very serious way, Gustin went to live in the world he had constructed, not to escape life, but to understand it. McCarthy says nothing about stepping into self-constructed worlds. What McCarthy says is this, the program apply has been embedded in the Lisp programming system. That means the Lisp interpreter can be invoked from within a Lisp program. And that is profound implications for how a programmer relates to the interpreter, to the world in which their programs exist. We have a language that can transform its own source code, a language that is easily implemented in terms of itself, a language with direct access to the interpreter used by the underlying system. McCarthy has given us everything we need to extend the language, to wrap the world of the Lisp interpreter and the worlds of our own interpreters. We can change the semantics of the language. We can add and remove operators we can fit the language to the problem at hand. We can make the world of Lisp our world, a world that distills our realities just as Gustin's world distilled his. Thank you.